we, we wanted to do a Sonidos Negros, uh -huh. and I'm like, somebody gave me your email, mm -hmm. and I chatted you up, and I said, you know, yeah. oh, come and do a Sonidos Negros event with me in New York. And then I went to see you at Town Hall, and I came up and said hello. And then we were in touch, and I told you about this conference, and I asked if you would come. And you said yes, oh, okay. which was pretty extraordinary. So, um, so here we have. Raul Rodriguez and Mario Mas, thank you so much for being here. Okay. Thank you. Aquí vengo con mi son a cantarte frente a frente, a bailarte con ambiente y a tocarte el corazón. Voy buscando la razón que se esconde en los rincones. Voy tomando posiciones y encontrando semejanza, yo voy buscando la danza que late en los corazones. 
Traigo un son de barco viejo, traigo un punto marinero, ay, traigo un compás compañero, que te parte los pellejos. He atravesado el espejo de los mares de Poniente He vivido entre la gente compartiendo la cultura Ay, las razas no son tan puras ni somos tan diferentes He visto los mismos sones en los puertos más lejanos. Hay ritmos que son hermanos de antiguas generaciones. He tocado celebraciones hasta las claras del día. Yo he visto a una bulería. Y rematando en la parranda Y he visto a la zarabanda Bailando por alegría Thank you, please. Un aplauso para Mario Más. He's my Super Mario Bro. <laughs> yeah. Tengo? Sí, sí. Um, okay. So I want to do um, something special for, for today because it's a big honor. It's a California Dreaming came true for me, <laughs> yeah, and I have to say thank you to Meira, Josh, Walter, Anthony, uh, the university, the foundation, because it's a, it's a really special uh, thing to mix the anthropology and the music in a creative way. Uh, I think the most important thing in the world is the creativity, and our reason is uh, mainly a creative reason. Uh, our mind seek every day is searching uh, new things, new ways uh, of talking, new ways of uh, to talk with your parents, to talk with your wife, new ways of cooking, and new ways also to make uh, science or to make music. So 
when I came to the university in Sevilla, I began to start study anthropology at the same time, uh, start to, to play guitar in flamenco blues, flamenco jazz, flamenco rock bands, in the first uh, approaches to flamenco to another kind of music. So for me, it was a problem in that time, and I had to look for a solution. I had to put together the both discipline, disciplines to, to, so to resolve my life. You know, because it was a, a problem to, to go uh, play and then go to the university and how, how to make close these two worlds that uh, it seems so different, it seems so antagonic. The reason and the work of the books, the works of the documentation, and the joy of the music, the freeing our minds and the creativity of new things. I was very lucky to grow up in Sevilla in the 70s. My mother is a very, very good singer. It's, not, uh, it's easy to, to say because it's my mother, but it, she's really a good singer. It's Martirio, well known in Spain and also in Latin American context. Um, it was the first woman in the 80s in talk, uh, to talk about the, the problems in the women, the modern women, and to make a fusion between copla, flamenco, and rock and electricity and avant-garde. Um, she used to put the peineta and also the dark glasses as, as Lou Reed. <laughs> you know, this was a mix in between punk and between <laughs> tradition. Uh, it was a very, very funny environment. In this, in this time, it was the finish of the dictatorship of Franco. It was a freedom time for us. It was the first... Um, uh, First time we, we can make a new world in Spain, and we can go out from that darkness and that uh, lie. So we can. I, I grew up in this environment with. It was the first time of Pata Negra, of Veneno, Smash, Loli Manuel, Gualberto, and that kind of musicians in Spain that took the Californian music and the flamenco music. So I grew up with Janis Joplin and Fernando Dutrera, with Jimi Hendrix and Diego del Gastor in the same <laughs> home. <laughs> My parents used to, to play music in the both sense, play and enjoy. Uh, so I, I want to continue this work in my own time. Um, and I want to, to show you my way of work. It's a different way of work. But maybe it could be useful to, to, to you. Um, so I think the best uh, way to see that is to make a text commentary about the lyric of the song. So we put the song now. And now we can talk about what I'm saying in the song. And, and then we can uh, see some examples of connections in between flamenco and another music. music. So. <coughs> so this is the, the lyric of the song. I am saying, aquí vengo con mi song a cantarte frente a frente. This is a position, this, this is what songs matter for us. Uh, here I am with my song to, to sing you face to face. And this is a position, this is uh, one of the utilities of the music, of the traditional music. It was a presentation, is uh, to introduce yourself to the world. It makes in a punto flamenco is a new uh, palo, it's a new proposal of new kind of style. Mixing the Cuban punto, that it was a guajiro music, a music from the country in Cuba, that always uh, make these uh, 10 verses, octosyllab verses, decima, and uh, uh, a rhythm that it has 12 beats as the buleria as there's so many music that you have in the Caribbean. Um, and the way of the poetry as an improvis improvising thing. You can say whatever you want to say in the time that you want to say. So this is mainly the, the, the utility of the song, no? to sing things that it will be true, and to, sing, uh, to sing truly. And it was the, also the, um, the old function of the trovadores, of the juglares, that uh, talk about things that are far away uh, in the space or in time. So this is uh, the, 
the main thing, no? It says, a, bail a bailarte con ambiente y a tocarte el corazón. I want to say that uh, I want to do a um, dance music that it was not silly music. I, I think that sometimes the reason and the, and the ideas that it very, very well building is not funny. And sometimes the dance music, it doesn't say nothing. So I want to put these two, si these two things. We have to dance, because when you dance, everything is true. So, and you have to cut the corazón. It had to be emotion. It had to be emotions, because if it's only a cold song, you cannot get into the, to the hair to the uh, people, and the people will forget it. Because you only remain the things that touch your heart and change your mind and change your world. And then I say, voy buscando la razón que se esconde los rincones. I, I, I'm searching for the reason that it hides hide in the, the corner. When in Andalusia, when something is loosened, they say, where is that? And it always the, the grandmother says, se esconde los rincones. The things is hiding in the corner. So I'm looking through away the, the, the reality and apply the emic and ethic anthropologic method so uh, into, into the music, not only to study the music uh, context, all, uh, also to play the music. Because sometimes the people say, this song talks about that, and it's not talking about that. It's too many things around. So, voy tomando posiciones y encontrando semejanzas. I think that, that the song has to be political, it has to be the art, it has to be activist, it has to be artivist. It had to be a mix in between. So you had to be in, in some position. Even if you make a song that it, it doesn't say nothing, this is a position. Yeah. Even if you make a song that only talks about love, it is a position. It, you are not talking about reality, political situation, or races, or, or, or anything. No. <coughs> and encontrando semejanzas, so making connections in between things. I want to study the flamenco as a music that belongs to the international circuit, to a global stage uh, in the Afro-Andalusian Caribbean. One more of the music that in 500 years building this uh, folk music, these lyrics and these readings, and it's not a pure music, it's not a Orient music, it's not a only gypsy music. It's a music for everybody, it's a music made for very, very kind, different kind of people. So, <coughs> and then I say, yo voy buscando la danza que late los corazones. When you say the, the bulería, the bulería is a three pattern. But it's always a three, no? But when you play claps in a flamenco contest, and you don't know exactly what has happened, if you play, somebody is going to, Somebody is going to take you off. <laughs> the, party. the only way to, to keep standing in the party is to make, as in Morón, the people say, tocando a dos. Because you can make every kind of contra tiempos and nobody gets you off. And this is the beat of the heart. The heart exactly makes. And for me, the life has at, at least three points, not two points. Every explanation that says black and white, good and bad, flamenco, no flamenco, Spanish, not Spanish, for me, it's not true. Because uh, even in a, in, a, in a couple, in a love couple, there are you, your wife, and the world. So you have three points, and this one point the point that we name the tierra, we don't play the tierra. We play. But we look, the tierra is on there. Yeah. So I look for explanation that has at least three points, not only two points of understanding to, to understand the music. If you have a song, you have the song, you, and the public, and the, and the crowd. No? So 
this is the thing of the of the first. This is a, 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 a way of thinking of uh, French philosophy, Gilles Deleuze. It talks about rhizoma. It talks about uh, that the life is a uh, uh, red. A web. Yeah, a web. The life is a web. The life is not reason and consequence. There are so many things playing at the same time. And it depends of the force of each line that one thing happens and one thing happens. So I can talk with you about this conference, but now I can meet Constance. And now Mario, you can meet Maria Luisa that is working about Solea Farkas uh, with the, bass, the music that he plays. So everything is connected now. And now when we are in the global world, and you can see that. So the, the next um, lyric, <coughs> it talks about um, traigo un son de barco viejo, traigo un punto madrinero. I'm talking about this, and flamenco is all, it's also American music. We have the music in flamenco in between Sevilla and Cadiz, and Sevilla and Cadiz were the ports of the all American colonies. We have not flamenco in the north of Spain, or we have not creation of flamenco uh, out of this triangle, the magic triangle in between Sevilla and Cadiz, that all this village and all these, these kind of places. So I love to work with a concept of, of uh, Mexican theoretician Antonio Garcia de Leon. He talks about the Afro-Andalusian Caribbean as the main cultural song. We, uh, the, the real world to understand our culture is not only Mexican music or Argentinian music, the big Caribbean, also Argentinian, also Uruguay. So I think in the, in the 20th century, every, every country it says, OK, our music is ours. But it doesn't mean that Argentinian music it was made by Argentinian music or Spanish music it was made by Spanish music musicians. It was, uh, this is ours because this is by not, not, not made for us. It's nuestro, eh? It's como si fuera nuestro, no? Yeah, yeah, it's ours, it's for us. So every, every country uh, thinks that the music is only in this place, but we have to open the mind not only to understand the music, because for me it's not so important to understand what happened in the past. For me it's important what we going to be happen in the future. How we can make the tradition go away, creating, uh, creating new songs, new styles. So you have to understand what happened before, but to go on and to make new things. To make new songs and to make an idea, an idea of to make a new world and also to change the world. Because the fusion of art is to imagine that we can make a new possible world, different world. <coughs> so it says also, traigo un compás, compañero, que te parte los pellejos. I'm talking about that we had also drums in Spain, in Spain, but it was a time, I don't know exactly, it was in the 17th uh, century, and not so many years, but it was important thing that it was forbidden the drums. So uh, we put all these drums, uh, contratiempos, these rhythms, into the feet, in the footwork, as Constance says, the claps on this, and the body language in the body. So, so um, I work also with Juan de Juan, he's a very, very good flamenco dancer. Uh, he recorded now for my second album. That it was. It will be also a book CD um, with all the theoric uh, that I'm working about the Afro-Andalusian connection. Um, and Juan de Juan is very, very, very nice man. He's like a child. He's like a boy in his, in his mind. No? He's always creative. Um, yesterday, Constance played some things that it was this guy with the, uh, what it could be, this is me with Juan in an improvisation, uh, in a presentation of the work Negros de Arena y Cali. It was the work of Jesus Cosano. He was one of the first men to study the, the black connections in Andalusia. He made all these uh, uh, illustrations that you can see in the, in the first, and the, all the pictures with the work with the old pictures that you can see in the book also, as this, yeah. It's a man, this, he, this man, very, very good man. 
So he made the work, and we made this little performance improvising. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. And so, also Juan de Juan works. Oh. No, with this kind of people. <clears throat> with this guy that you put Constance yesterday. A video. It was when he, uh, they were together in, in New York. Yeah. So this is one of the connections that, that we can find, you know, the flamenco and the tap and all the kinds of, of languages that talk with the feet. 
as you say, there was no words, but they can talk with their feet. So, um, yeah. I say, he atravesado el espejo de los mares de Poniente. For us, we are in the Orient side view. So when we go to America, we go to Poniente. We talk in the winds. The winds that came from Orient is the Levante. And the wind that came from the, the, the west side is the, is the Poniente. So when we go to America, we go to Poniente. And for us, the sea is like a mirror. Because Andalusian people, if, if, if you want to know what is Andalusia really, you have to come to Cuba. You have to come to America to understand really who we are. So um, if, if you can play, if you want to play some music of, uh, if you want to know how the, this 12 rhythm it, uh, it has made of the Buleria, some people, the, the official history in, in, in flamenco says that it came from Orient, but I played with Indian musicians. They can play every rhythms because they have the conical, tak, takati, takadimi, taka, taka. So they can count everywhere. But they don't have this 12 cell rhythm. This 12 cell rhythm is from Sarabanda. It was the first black dance to be popular in Andalusia. So popular that it was forbidden. So the names, the name. You can not, doesn't, they don't use the name, but the rhythm keeps on. <laughs> so change the name, <laughs> the empire fall, but the rhythm <laughs> keeps on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah? So you have Sarabanda, you have Hakara, you have Chacona, and you have so many rhythms until you have Petenera, you have Caña, you have Solea, and you have Buleria, only in this 20th century. So it's the same rhythm, playing and playing and playing and playing. So if you want to find music that you can make a fusion, not to make something new. Uh, instead to make something new, you have to back to the future. You have to back to the past to make what we can do. So in this kind of, uh, of things, of experiments, I have to, uh, so many luck to be, to be playing with my mother, because with my mother I play with Compay Segundo, with Chabela Vargas, with Soledad Bravo, Cecilia Todd, Omar Portuondo, so many wonderful musicians for, for the Caribbean. So one of the things um, in relationship with the Malagueña is this kind of Malagueña that nobody talks in these days. It was the Malagueña from Venezuela, from the Margarita Island. It was a, thing, it's a, way, a way of thinking for us is so similar to the Malagueña and also to the Fandangos. Uh -huh. So uh, when I got with my mother to uh, northern countries, we used to put, to make something of the, of the music of the country, so we go. So this is the Malagueña Venezolana mixed with the flamenco fandango of Pérez de Guzmán in Andalusia. This is my mother, and she sings very well. <laughs> Quisiera ser la sombra de la noche Quisiera ser la sombra de la noche Para dejarte dormir sola y tranquila Y despertarte cuando la aurora venga y darte un beso mi amor en tus pupilas y darte un beso mi amor en 
So this is our way of tracing music. <laughs> okay, so we can go on. Um, I say, he vivido entre la gente compartiendo la cultura. I am, um, I want to, to make a participant observation. This is an anthropologic method that uh, if you want to learn some music, you cannot learn, uh, in the case of flamenco or traditional music, by outside reading. You have to put into and to make friends and to be one, to be part of it. You have to be um, part of the, the, the wizards or the sorcerers. You have to be one of them. Because of that, uh, you, you cannot understand the performance, what happened when it's happening. You can see by your side and, and you can understand some things and you can listen to the people's explanation, but it's in the music really, it has only three laws for me. It's a rhythm. If you have rhythm, you can play. If you are in tune, you can play. And if you have emotion or beauty, you can play. Even if you are from outside of the world or if you're playing another instrument that never played in this, in this music. So for me, when I, uh, I want to learn the music from Morón de la Frontera, the Toque del Diego de Gastor, uh, uh, the style of Morón de la Frontera, I, I spent 15 years going not to work only to be here, to make friends, and to, to, to live the music as it is. So for me, this is a way of really learning anything. No? And uh, las razas no son tan puras ni somos tan diferentes. So the races is not so pure, and we are not so different. I'm talking about that we have so many black influences in, 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 in Andalusia. Yesterday, we can see the, the documentary. So if you think that in Sevilla, in Cadiz, so the 16th century, it was 10% or 15% or even 20% of black people. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, you cannot imagine flamenco with these rhythms, of the slaves' rhythms. So for me now, seeing the flamenco is one more of the Afro-diaspora musician, music. So we can make flamenco jazz, we can make flamenco blues, we can make flamenco tap, flamenco hip hop, and it's not fusion. For me, it's the real tradition. To keep this music away from the other uh, influences is it's a modern tale. Right. It's a modern fantasy for the romantic people and for the tourist industry and for the foreign and for the giddies and for the. But if you want, if you want to make new music, you have to you have to be with this in your mind. So. Um, the main rhythms in the flamenco, the sarabanda, it was a black rhythm that makes the origin of the 12. Also the fandango, it was a rhythm that came to us from the Afro-Caribbean. It was the first meaning of, the first uh, mention of the fandango, it was in the um, 1752, in the Diccionario de Autoridades, it was talking about the fandango, it's a rhythm that brings the people, that it was in the, in the Indian, in the, uh, Caribbean, yeah. India. Um, yeah, so um, and it was a rhythm that came from, from there. And then we mix with another 
singing, another folk way of singing in Spain. And then we have the fandango styles in, in the 20th century. But in that time, in 17th century and 18th century, it was the pop rhythm. It's a popular rhythm that also was dancing in New Orleans, when New Orleans was in Spanish, before, just before the first jazz. So if we can find something in between the blues and the fandango, <laughs> because Jerry Roll Morton he was played the Spanish single, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, in the left hand, you have the Spanish way. <laughs> yeah? And the, in, the, in the right hand, you have the pentatonic, so you have the blues. If you cannot make this connection, you cannot understand almost the blues and almost the flamenco <laughs> as a isolated music. So for me, we play flamenco blues at home. I was thinking that it was a crazy thing by, by my parents, but one of my objectives is to demonstrate to myself that my parents it was not so full people. <laughs> <laughs> no? so, so we had, and also we had the tangos in flamenco, and also the tango came from tango, 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 for the rhythm of the Cuban black people. And it was the first introduction for the tango rhythm. It was from Cadiz and came from Cuba. It was so popular in Cadiz, so popular in Madrid, and very, very fast. It was to Madrid, it was to Paris, con la negrita Maria Martinez, it was a black Cuban woman that danced in Paris and make a big success dancing tango, the negros. Then we put this tango de negros at the end of the zarzuelas in the 19th century. And then the white people get slowly the rhythm and say, instead of tum pa ta tum pa ta tum pa ta tum pa tum go tum pa tum So you have the habanera music. <laughs> so you have the habanera music. And this rhythm came also to Argentina. To Argentina. And so the black people that play tum pa ta tum pa ta tum. The Argentinian tango, or you have the samba in Brazil, or you have the Cuban song in Havana, or you have the Paso Doble in Spain. So you have so many music in binary. It was a white version of these tenari dances that was, or polyrhythmic dances, of, uh, the always in three, the black people. And it was so popular because the people also understand that binary music and tango's music it was a city music, not country music. It was a modern music for the cities that was in the Industrial Revolution. No? It was so, wow, the tum -ta, tum -ta, tum this makes money. And tum -ta -ta, tum -ta, it's for your grandfather <laughs> in the countryside. So we had to understand that we have black influences in the rhythm. So if you, have, if you want to, to go on, you, you, ha you have to understand that. And to finish, the, the last lyric is talking about this. It's a, like a reading map. Yo he visto los mismos sones en los puertos más lejanos. Hay ritmos que son hermanos de antiguas generaciones, no? I see the same songs, the same lyric playing in Colombia. And then, in, in, in la pena y la que no es pena, toda es pena para mí. Ayer lloraba por verte y yo lloro porque te vi. They sing in Mexico. And we sing that in Sevillanos, in Fandango, in, in in Sevilla, well, well, oh. and there's so many lyrics, so many chords, so many melodies, so many rhythms that it's the same rhythm. Yeah. So you have to be conscious that, that, that we are part of a family, a big family, an old family, so we are not alone. <laughs> no one is uh, alone. No? So he tocado en celebraciones hasta las claras del día. I think this not, doesn't need explanations. I play, I play until awakening with so many people, no? and that's, that's the way of, of understanding the, the, the traditional music, as Rafael was saying about the fandangos uh, yesterday in Jarocho's uh, community, or even in flamenco, when the, the best time is at nine in the morning when everybody's <laughs> And some people chase the guitar and plays for solea very slowly, <laughs> and you, oh. This is a way to get into the music. The other way is political way for me. It's not true. And then, yo he visto una bulería rematando en la parranda y he visto a la sala banda bailando por alegrías. I can see these connections, and this is the happy thing for me, that music is all around us, and it's a big party for us, so we can enjoy, and we must enjoy the music and enjoy the life and get to the future with a new conscience. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ajá. Tienes un traductor fantástico aquí detrás contigo. ¿No crees tú que eh, lo que nosotros más estamos apasionados que es el flamenco, eh, el ritmo se está imponiendo a la música? Es decir, se baila como deporte, porque eso... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like dance is now it's like a sport. Yeah, it could be, it could be, but I think that we cannot, um, we cannot make anything without rhythm. Even speak. It's not what you're saying. It's the time when you say. Even if you're playing. Even if you play for solea very, very slow, or if you, even if you play a free time music, even in that time, even in the Indian music when Galinga Barkan was playing, is the time. Not only the mood, not only the, the scale, not only the melody, is the time. For me, the rhythm is mo the most important thing. For me, I, I, I start play drums. My first instrument it was when I was nine. I was saying to my mother, I want a drum, I want a drum. <laughs> and I played drum until 15, 16 years. Oh, wow. And then I, I became playing guitar, and then I became to playing tres, Cuban tres, and making the intro de flamenco. For me, even in wh when I play tres, I'm playing drums with notes. I put uh, in the rhythm some notes. But for me, the, the left hand, pff, OK, it's, it's, it's for get in tune with another people. But for me, the main thing is this. Uh -huh. And this, in, in flamenco, we have these so many techniques because we are substituting the drums. We, we were not uh, drums in the flamenco style. We, we are only guitar and, and, and singing. So you have to, we make the beats in the, in the top. We meet all, it's like we have a drum. For me, the, the rhythm is important. And if we make no rhythm in music, the people went to the dance hall. The people need to dance, but not only dance as a physical way, also dance uh, as an event. When you say to your parents, to, I, I, I go to the dance hall, I say, OK, OK, you go. You go because you, you can find a partner, you can fall in love, and you can reproduce yourself, and you can make songs, <laughs> you know? But if you say, OK, I, I want to go to see a songwriter that's saying, to, uh, talking about his inner problems, his inner life. <laughs> Maybe we need to dance. So we, I think we need the rhythm. But it's, uh, in, uh, we need the rhythm, and, uh, and we lose the rhythm. The people that can make sen sensible music, really sensitive music, we depreciate the, depreciate the rhythm so many years. So the people went to the dance music that doesn't say anything. And they win the yeah. war, you know? And they, 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 they dance in reggaeton because we are not making dance music. We are making, wow, <laughs> magical music. So magical music is for burgess society. We have so many money to get to the theater. And <laughs> but the dance music, it can be in the street. And we lose the street music. We lose the sense of the popular music for me.
Yeah, yeah, but this is rhythm also. Yeah. Yeah. I think the dictatorship is the click. Yeah. You know, when we record the albums, we have the click, tack, tack, tack. So you put the drums, and then came the bass player the other day, and, the, and another guy make us a recording in, um, at home. But everyone is playing one with a thing, a click, that we never had before in the music. So all the records, all the albums sounds like Boring. Yeah, because it's not organic rhythm. Yeah, it's a Japanese computer rhythm. The Japanese says, "Oh, I, I think that this is that, that, that." But, but even when you are playing as a human being, it's not the same. It's not exactly the same. And you can put the jatam, and you can feel the rhythm. You can get them in tune with other people, but it's not slavery rhythm. Now we are slaves from the clique. Only with rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And say we, we only play rhythm music and now we all the all the musicians play with click to, to all the albums play with click. Yeah. 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 Yeah, totally. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, because we, we are not making the rhythm. The rhythm makes, the uh, rhythm came down by the computer. If we make the rhythm together, it's another, it's another thing. We are building a common place. It's a rhythm, it's a code, it's a, it's a, it's a language. Hello? Uh, when you talked about uh, politics, I'm curious, I, I, I can't remember what you said, thankfully I recorded it, so <laughs> but exactly, but you said something about like entering into politics, and I do a lot of work on politics in my research, Complose por otro, por ejemplo, es mm -hmm. otro, it's a different form, right? Yeah. And so with you, like, it's not explicit, but it's implicit in yeah. some of the work that you're doing. Can you sort of yeah. I, I don't think that uh, for be political or for or for to have a position, you have to talk about this place in this time in this moment. You can you can do that, but for me it's another sense very very more open things. If I'm talking about freedom, I'm talking about my freedom, but talking about, about your freedom also. Um, we use the poetry. We we must use the poetry, the imagination. If not, we are making a manifestation with, uh, you know, the <laughs> and this is short. This is uh, the the alcance. The reach. Yeah, the yeah. It, it doesn't go so far. But when John Lennon says, "War is over," it's any war. It's not this war. It's any war in the world. The war is over. This war is over. So, for me, you have not to be. It's not necessary. You don't need to be so explicit. But implicit, you have to be somebody in this world. Uh, and to say your things, because if you open your world, you, your, your mouth is to say something. Yeah, statement. it's a political thing. And yeah. I don't know of anybody else that's doing mm. that. I, I don't. You know, I know people that are appropriating, you know, to, to take an old-fashioned word, but um, 
you know, I don't know of someone who is, um, is, is opening, is being, tr being open and transparent about, yeah. about these exchanges. Yeah, I'm talking to break the, the borders yeah. in between the past and in the future, in between the popular music or traditional or avant-garde or electric or acoustic music. Yeah. Now in Spain it's very, very difficult to talk op open uh, with political, I even to make jokes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Two days ago they were putting a, in a court to a humorist for make a joke about... Comedian. Yeah, a comedian for make a, a joke about one of the generals of Franco that is dead four years ago. A girl make a Twitter a Twitter, making a joke, and they put one year in jail. Wow. Yeah. It's a joke in Twitter, you know? Now we are living so hard times in Spain in this sense. Uh, but this is another conversation about if really the Franco time is, is finished in Spain or is on the side because yeah. we, we didn't make the work. We didn't make the work about black people in Spain, about slavery. We didn't talk about civil war. Civil war, uh, we didn't talk about Franco. So even we cannot talk, but we have the poetry. Yeah. Mm. Eh? This is That's not right. a power point, this is a point of power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Surely I, I, I can do some. A little bit. Uh, I, I was uh, was so lucky to be friend of Jackson Brown. It's a, it's a incredible man. It's an amazing person, an amazing human being, and, and also a songwriter. Um, and I made an experience with him in Haiti. In Haiti, in this year, two 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 travels we made to make a, a cooperation work with APG, <coughs> Artists for Peace and Justice, that made. Uh, and a studio, a recording studio, and also a filming studio to make a school for the child, for the children, to learn how to make record albums, uh, how to make video clips. Wow. So Jackson, that is so, so clever man, oh. and so good hair man. He took uh, Jonathan Wilson, he took uh, John Russell, he took Habib Koite from Mali, Jenny Lewis from California also, and me put together in the studio, playing with the uh, Haitian musicians, and recording with the uh, Haitian people, uh, the children, that uh, was a uh, assistant for the recording, and, and they can learn how to make a, a song, and how to make a recording, and maybe we, we are giving him, giving them massive creation weapons. <laughs> it's not the stretch of weapons, <laughs> creation weapons. So, it was a very, 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 very important experience for me, not also uh, as, human, as a human being, and to see how difficult is the, the life in Haiti. This really the other world, because it's Africa, really Africa, place in the Caribbean, and it's no money for nothing, but the people are, is alive, and it's a music, it's a crazy music. They play the Konez. The Kone was a um, trumpet made a, um, in the old time, it was vaccine. It was caña de bambú, mm -hmm. and now it's a, it's like a, I don't know. It's like a metal cono, yep. And you can make only one note and the octave. Mm -hmm. So to make a melody, you had to be a band. You had to be four or five. It's rhythm. And they play this and in the in the kick drum in the street. So my mind was blowing. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the pre marching band. Because when it, when it was uh, the revolution in Haiti, it was the first black revolution, the first, uh, the first slavery revolution. And the slaves say, OK, the French Revolution says, we can poof <laughs> to, the, to the, our owners. So they did, 
is not French people in Haiti. Some of them uh, went to Santiago de Cuba, to the Orient of Cuba, just before that we have the dance song or the song. And they play the rat rat music, play frat, ta, ta, frat, ta, so ta, 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 ta. So people say that Haitian slave brings to Cuba the cinquillo figure. Ta, 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 ta. And this also came to New Orleans, when New Orleans become French yeah. at the beginning of the 19th century. So maybe this uh, way of playing a few guys in the street going fra, ta, 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 ta. You can imagine with these guys, when these guys came to, to France, uh, to New Orleans, and you can put uh, saxophones or trombones or trumpet with yeah. so many notes. Yeah. So it's like a crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the marching bands. Yeah. And you have the jazz. Yeah. But nobody talks about it. Mm. Nobody talks about Haiti. You do. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now we are talking. Huh? But nobody talks about Haiti in any sense. It's like the forget place. It's so close to the Caribbean. It's so close to the Spanish side, to the Dominican Republic. But it's no one, no one want to talk about this kind of poverty and, and depreciate the people, no? Because they, they were the first and the only place where the slaves and the black people they say, no, sorry, but no. So, but we can talk about it now. It was a nice experience, yeah. Thank you, man. La cruza, ¿no? Uh -huh. Se explica eso porque muchísimas personas que están seguro que están viendo a academia uh -huh. a aprender y gastarse dinero en aprender. Y si tú no controlas ese fenómeno tan peculiar del flamenco, uh -huh. no sabes cuándo iniciar el barrio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the cruza in, in music is, is when you don't play. You, yeah, you, 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 if the one is boom, ba, 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 boom, you can get into before the one. So to up, ba, up. We, we, the musicians, talk about Ana Cruza that this is not in the one. This get into in Ana Cruza. So. For play flamenco, you have to know, really know the rhythm, so you can be able to get before. If you are waiting to the right time, it's nothing happening. For me, it's okay, if you have time. Uh -huh. Okay, so, okay, so, vamos a hacer un negro curro, compadre. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, we finish with this, and then, it's, this is another history, that very, very interesting history. Uh, the, we don't know about the black people in Andalusia, but so fast I, I can. I try to be fast. Uh, we know Andalusia by the mirror of Cuba. So Fernando Ortiz, he was uh, one of the first anthropologists in Cuba, the big one who studied the black influences in the, in the Cuban culture. He talks about the negros curros. Nobody talks about the negros curros in Andalusia. But curros was the, was the name that the people in Cuba used to, to, to name to the people to, from, who came to, from Sevilla and from Cadiz, and it was the Andalusian people, also white people. It was uh, curros, curros, to uh, make a distinction, a distinction in between Andalusian people or Gaelican people, Galician people, or Catalonian, or Canarios, 
or another immigrant people that came to Cuba. So these Negros Curros, it was the first black people in, to came to Cuba in the 15th, 16th century. There was a, the golden age in, almost the golden age in Spain, and it was Andalusian people. It was black in skin, but they talk Andalusian. They don't have religion. They have uh, a pre-flamenco style of way of life. It was so golden. Uh, like a scarf? Yeah, scarf, hat, um, you know. Walking in the in the ports, always almost lying this and this, almost rubbing this, this and this, improvising decimals. It was like a pre-flamenco. <laughs> so when you see the pictures about this kind of people, you say, "What?" So um, Jesus Cajal made a work, also work a very nice work about the, the the images, the pictures that we have in this time, so we can see in the time that we play in the song. <laughs> okay, so this is the song of the Negro Curro singing in first person as I was the Negro Curro because they didn't wrote his history, their history because nobody talks about them. In Andalusia, nobody knows the history, but we have Cuba to know more about ourselves. Try to. Voy a contarles mi historia y aunque alguno se la sabe, les regalaré la llave del hueco de mi memoria. Yo no tengo aquella gloria que otros flamencos tuvieron, porque de ellos sí escribieron los que tenían buena pluma. A mí se me debe una canción que no compusieron. Negro curro yo nací en Andalucía, por eso curros me decían cuando aparecí en La Habana, aquella tierra era hermana del mundo que conocí. Yo no soy calabarín, ni anico guineo, ni congo, yo soy flamenco y compongo el son que me gusta a mí. Yo siempre llevo sombrero y mi pañuelito rojo. Yo tengo más de cien ojos para ver el mundo entero con mi arte salamero y la faca en el fajín. Siempre vivo para el trajín que a mí se me presentara no hubo trifulca tan rara que no le pusiera fin.
que siendo Sevilla la dueña del universo explorado solo fui esclavizado por una guapa sureña y no duerme aquel que no sueña y el que sueña se despierta con la mente más abierta para seguir buscando el oro si yo tuviera un tesoro este campo no tendría puerta Negro curro, negro curro, negro curro, negro curro. Yo no tengo religión, solo mi curra es mi diosa. A mí me importan las cosas que tienen razón de son. Yo vengo de aquel rincón de los puertos andaluces. Soy del siglo de las luces y sin dejar de bailar he llegado hasta el manglar. Y aquí no mandan las luces. Ay, a mí no hay quien me esclavice. Yo ya nací libertario. Tengo un don extraordinario. Pa' que no me martiricen, soy amigo del que dice la verdad en la casa ajena. Y tengo una razón muy buena para vivir en los manglares, porque allí no hay militares. Que me pongan las cadenas. Canto de cimas al viento y en la calle soy poeta de bandurría y de chancleta, de falseta y sentimiento. Yo compongo en el momento lo que dicta el corazón y te robo cualquier son si me gusta el son y que te me lo aprendo y se me mete en la carne del bordón. Soy picado y valentón, come gente, traga hombre, le pone más de cien nombres a este curro vacilón, taco cheche y guapetón, come candela y charrán, chulos, ácaro y rufián no saben qué más llamarme, si quieren venir a buscarme, conmigo se encontrarán. Negro curro, negro curro, negro curro, ya. curro a mí me dice, yo soy negro de pellejo, pero soy andaluz viejo, aunque algunos me contradicen, no consiento que me pisen la historia que no escribí, y de nuevo estoy aquí y canto para contarte que yo siempre tuve arte, donde quiera que viví. ¡Oye! 